This video is going to be all about subscribing. So did you subscribe to my channel yet? Let's talk about why you should subscribe to my channel. No, no, not that subscribe. We're going to talk about the exam informs messaging center, which allows you to have this published subscriber pattern right inside of exam informs because it's just built in. So you can very loosely couple, um, just send a message from the sender to the um, subscriber and they don't even have to know each other, but you can trigger code from the other side. Um, so let's just go check out what that's all about. But you should still also subscribe to this channel. So surprise, surprise, here we see a file new Xamarin Forms project running in Visual Studio for Mac. Um, on the left, you can see the XAML code of the template that you get out of the box. On the right, you can see it running on the iOS simulator. Um, so while this is on Mac, you can also do this exact same thing on Windows. Um, and while you see this running in the iOS simulator, all of this is just pure Xamarin Forms. So this will work on any platform that is supported by Forms. Now, um, let me update the title, which is always a big thing in my videos. So um, this is going to be messaging center sample. And whenever I say that, save that, you can see hot reload kicking in and it will automatically show these changes on my iOS simulator. This also works for Android, of course, and on physical devices. So that is very cool. Okay, so let me actually get out the rest of this UI right here. So I don't need all of these labels. I'm going to need a couple of buttons actually. So I'm going to do this stack layout right here, make the orientation horizontal. Um, well, not, not like that. There we go. Slash. There we go. Close it. And I'm going to add a couple of buttons here. And the first one is going to be uh, subscribe. So this is not subscribe to me, which is something that you should also be doing. But this is subscribe to the messaging sender uh, that is going to send us messages in a little bit. And whenever we click that, uh, we are going to handle that. So I'll do that in a little bit. Um, and the other thing I want to do here is go to page. Um, and I'm going to generate a new click handler here. There we go. Uh, because what I want to show you is um, I want to get this new page. I want to show you to that we can actually send a message between um, different objects, different pages, and that will all work as well to make the sample a little bit more um, real life, a real life example. Um, this is all to the side. I always like to center my things. So let's say horizontal center and expand, save that. There we go. Now we have subscribe and go to page and life is good. Okay, so to show you that I'm receiving messages, I'm going to use the collection view right here. Um, and since this is also in a stack layout as well, I can just add that collection view right here. And for that collection view, I'm going to say item template. And there we go. And I'm going to specify a data template. And that's just simply going to be a label with the text that has a binding to dot. So if you're confused here with data binding and MVVM and that kind of stuff, I have a couple of videos on that. You can see the playlist popping up in your screen right now, or you can find it in the video description. Um, so I'm going to uh, skip over that a little bit, but what this will do is basically the dot will bind to the, the entire object that um, is, is going to be rendered in this single instance of the template. And actually in this collection view, I'm going to say item source, um, is also binding. I'm going to bind this to a collection, which is going to be uh, messages. Messages. Yes, messages is a good name. Um, so there we go. I still have to create that, of course. I think this is complaining. Property data template content does not support the value of label. I think that's incorrect. I think it actually does support that Visual Studio. Uh, so I'm going to take my chances and see if that is actually true, or we will have some debugging on my hands a little bit later. Um, so there's that. Then um, let's go to the code behind for this main page right here. And uh, oh, now these names are a little confusing. So let's do this subscribe also to my YouTube channel. Winky face. Huh? 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 All right, there we go. And what we're going to do here is we're going to see the messaging center. So you can see it already pop up. Um, and this is just a static class that um, always exists basically. So you can just um, access it like this. Uh, you can reference the actual instance. It is of the type I messaging center. So you can also use this with um, your dependency injection if that's what you want. Um, but we can just use this messaging center right here. But the most important things are down here, these bottom three, send, subscribe and unsubscribe. Um, so whenever you 
send something, you're just going to send it. And send can have multiple subscribers. So you don't know where you're going to send it to, who is going to receive it, but the subscribers can act on that message. Now the subscribe, of course, is the other end of the line uh, where you can actually subscribe to a certain message. Um, and whenever you get that message, you can act upon that. So you can execute any code that you like, basically. Um, in different parts of your code, they don't need to have any relationship. That's the, the loose coupling thing of the messaging center. Um, because you know you don't know where you're sending, you don't know where you're actually, well, you do know where you're receiving, uh, but you don't have to have any relationship between the objects. So with this, you can you know reach into your platform code and, 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 and execute some iOS or Android specific code. Um, or you can just go to an entire different page and do some things there, maybe some new uh, data is coming in and you want to say in different parts of your application you have to reload some bits uh, but those parts of your application don't necessarily have a relationship uh, or some way to actually um, reach each other so you could then just use the messaging center to send a little message and execute some code there and the unsubscribe of course is whenever you don't want to receive the messages anymore um, you can unsubscribe and you will no longer receive them so here is one note um, you can you should basically only unsubscribe whenever you don't really want to receive the messages anymore because all of this is working with weak references which means whenever the page or the object or whatever um, is not necessary anymore uh, the garbage collection will actually clean it up um, whether or not you're subscribed. So this subscribe will not hold on to a reference of the object that um, has the subscription. Um, that is a good thing to know so that you know that, um, you know, you are not waiting for any messages to come in while they are not. Um, and also that you don't have to be worried about memory leaks. So you basically only have to unsubscribe whenever um, you really don't want the messages anymore and not so much because of the memory management. Um, okay, so here I'm going to subscribe and whenever I do, I want to specify a sender. So I still need to specify the, um, the type of the sender, uh, which can be anything. So I can make this object to make it very generic and not have that relationship between the objects. Uh, and in this case, I know it's going to come from another page so I can make it a little bit more specific to, to do that page. Um, then I have to specify the object of the subscriber. So that's going to be this because you know I want to subscribe the main page object. Um, so you can also subscribe another object from here if that's what you want. Um, we're going to do a message. So basically this type here that you specify here and this message here is going to be the unique kind of key um, that, that has to be like the same to actually get this message delivered, right? So that is the thing whenever we send it, we'll see that in a little bit. We have to specify the exact same things for the message to come across to, to this thing. Uh, so here I'm going to say tick. This is a magic string. You probably want to put this in some kind of shared place where um, it's a constant or, or whatever. So you don't get any typos in there and you can just reference that variable um, in, in both the send and the subscribe. Um, and then next I have the action which I can execute. Uh, so you can of course pass in some delegate here or you can just write it um, in line with a, a lambda expression which I'm going to do now. Um, and you can see because I specified this is a page, so um, I can get a parameter here uh, that is actually the page that is sending something. Um, so here I can also access the page or the other object that you might have specified. Um, I can get that here from uh, the parameter that is supplied as well. So basically it's kind of like the same as this event handler right here. You will get the sender and we can also get some arcs, some arguments. So I'll show that in a little bit. Um, so let's just close this. I think there was one other optional parameter that you could do here, which is the source. I'm not actually sure what that's all about. If you do know, let me know in the comments, then I can learn something from you. Uh, but actually, let me add an argument here. So whenever you want to um, also get some extra data with that message, you can totally do that. So here we go, date, time. I'm just going to send a simple date time here and you can see uh, that here with the action that I'm going to execute, I also have to update this. So date time because that's now coming in too. Uh, but this can be any object. This can be your own complex object with something that you want to, you know, need to provide extra data, uh, the data that has been reloaded. So you don't have to go out to the database again or go out to the REST API again. You can just send that data through your application. Uh, but what I'm going to do, oops, I need to add that um, public uh, observable collection because then it updates nicely of simple strings. So let the IntelliSense solve this using system collections object model. There we go. Uh, messages, I called it. 
And this has to be a property. Um, get set, there we go, is new observable collection string. There we go. So this is right. This is our collection that is the item source for our collection view messages. Um, and the observable collection makes sure that, you know, it updates nicely, that we don't have to do anything with our data binding. So the last thing I need to do is here set the binding context, not the condition, context is this. So basically this tells uh, the main page that it has to use uh, this 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 same object as its binding context and with that I can um, magically in my example say binding um, to a property so in this case messages and it will know that it has to come from this object and then with that binding dot um, here it knows to actually get that string out of that messages um, and to render that into this label so that is very quickly how this data binding works. Um, okay, so I got this in place, then I'll, all I need to do is messages dot add is, um, well, there we go, let's do message received at, uh, there we go, date time. Let's just do it like this. We will just see something come in. Uh, okay, so we've got that set up. Whenever a message is coming, we will just add that to our collection view. Um, and here, uh, go, go to page. Um, so let's do that. I want to make this async because the navigation stuff is all async. And I'm going to say await navigation dot. Uh, let's make it a modal uh, because you know else we'll run in that issue where iOS will start complaining that you can't navigate whenever it's not a navigation page and that kind of stuff. So I'll just do a modal um, push that one and make it a new Oh, and we don't have that page yet. Okay, so uh, all right, all right, all right. Let's create that page first. Go to my shared project, right click, add new file. And it's already on the forms section right here, forms content page, forms content page XAML, because you know, I love my XAML. Um, and here, this is the send page. So let's do that. And here we have our send page. Okay, good. I don't like this extra content thing. It's already done for us. And here I'm going to add another stack layout and let's make it horizontal option, center and expand, uh, vertical. So, you know, then it gets in there nice and centered. I love getting things centered. There we go. And do another button with a text of send, send, click, uh, there we go, this is going to be our send. And another button because we have a modal, so we have to have some way to close the page. There we go. Uh, let's get a space in there. Clicked. All right, so we've got this all set up. Let's finish the main page now first. So we can say new uh, send page, there we go. Okay, so this is not the way this works. All right. Wait, navigation. Oh, it says pop. Okay, push. Push modal async. There we go. Uh, so this is all set up. We can go to our new page where we can send things. Um, and we, whenever we subscribe, so whenever we receive that message, we will show that in our collection view. Okay, okay. This is going pretty well. So send page, we have a couple of buttons. Um, and let's do, so this one, we're going to send. And Let's do that. So we're again just going to say messaging sender, uh, but this time we are going to say send, and we're going to say page because you know remember that has to be that same thing um, that we have to actually send something. Um, and hello, where's my where's my oh there we go page sender. So this is going to be this right uh, because this is the page that's going to be sending the thing, the send page, and the message is going to be uh, tick. That's what I said the message would be, right? So there we go. This is enough to send a message. And remember, you have to, you know, this has to be in sync, the page, so the, the object that you're specifying and this message right here. Um, and what else we need to do is, of course, um, add that parameter in there. So that whole um, thing has to match, else your message won't be received. Um, and we can do that in the same way that we did with the subscribe. So here it's going to be a date time. And then whenever I do this, I have to specify a date time here. So this is just going to be date time dot now. There we go. So save that and we are ready to send some messages. So that is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and for this one, oh, we're going to close page. There we go. So uh, this again needs to be a sync. 
and we're going to say await navigation dot pop this time it has to be pop modal async and there we go so i think we've got everything set up now let's just stop our application and rerun this for a little uh, it should not be very long for this to come back up and then we'll see our page with a couple of buttons well we've seen this before um, but now it actually works so let me just go to the page first and we're going to click send so it did actually send, although we're not showing anything, but it did send, uh, but nothing happened, right? So we were expecting to go back to the previous page and see nothing because we didn't subscribe yet. So close page and there's nothing there. So that's good. And this is going to be a kind of, I'm, I'm kind of nervous now because is it going to work whenever I do subscribe? Uh, so let's click that subscribe button, go to the page again, click send. And now whenever we go back, we have a message received. Okay, that went well. So this is pretty cool, right? We can go to the one page, send a message to the other one, there is received, it can do all the things and you can just um, do everything with that message. That is pretty cool. Um, so now when I go here and I click send two times, then I expect to have three entries, right? So there we go. That just works out of the box. But there's one interesting thing that I want to um, you know, show you as well. That is whenever I click subscribe again, so now, is it going to be subscribed? Is it going to be double subscribed? What's going to happen? Well, notice that we have three items right now. I go to the page, I click send, and I go back, and now we have five. So this is something that you need to know, right? Whenever you subscribe a second time, the messages will come in twice. Whenever you do three, it will come in thrice. Thrice, is that a, is that a thing? Uh, well, anyway, yeah, you can, you can subscribe as many times as you want and it will be processed each time. So that is something you be, need to be aware of because what I have seen happening is people subscribing on appearing of their page, which means every time your page is appearing, you will have a new subscription and your messages will be processed over and over again. So you either need to be very aware with your unsubscribe as well, that you on the disappear do unsubscribe, uh, but it's maybe even better to just not do it on the on appearing. Um, and be very aware of the places where you want to subscribe to the messages. So um, that is something that I wanted to show you. So I hope this made clear how to work with this messaging center in Xamarin Forms, how to very loosely couple your code whenever you don't want to make a relationship between these objects um, and you still want to trigger some actions there. So to be very honest, this is kind of a last resort for me and I don't use it very, very often um, because you know it, it can make your code a little bit messy because it isn't really clear where something is sent or where something is subscribed and you can't do like right click find all references because you know there is no reference because um, that is the way this is built up. But it can be very useful. And actually one of the um, questions that I got under my video under uh, the dependency service to you know reach into your platform projects and run platform specific code is when should I use the messaging center and when should I use the dependency service? So is that something that you're also curious about? Please let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about that. Um, I'm planning to do that anyway, but then I can maybe prioritize that a little bit. Um, so that is because that is a good question and I'm happy to answer that one. Or of course, any other questions that you might have. So let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. As always, all the links can be found in the video description. Um, please click that like button if you've liked this video. Um, did I already ask you to subscribe to my channel for this video? I guess I did, but I'm doing it once more. Please subscribe to my channel. And other than that, well, I'll just be seeing you for my next video and keep coding.